Perfect. Uh, continue. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to uh, Starfish Beyond the Basics, a little workshop here to go over some of the features, new additions as of last year, some things you might not have known about, new stuff coming to Starfish, and then just an opportunity to discuss how we use Starfish, ways that you would like to learn how to use Starfish better. And if you have questions or concerns with things going on, we can ask those as we we go along with this little presentation here. Uh, so let me share my screen, get us going with this. And feel free at any time to jump into the chat, ask a question, I'll have that pulled up so I can see what's going on. I'll get participants too, if anyone raises their hand or something like that. Use our best Zoom etiquette. Okay, so here's our agenda for today. We're gonna to do a quick recap of last year's workshop. What are the different things that we went over? Maybe how they'll relate to what we can do going forward with Starfish. A uh, couple of the things we're gonna review are direct links to your calendar. So this is something that was released last year. Maybe not everyone is using this. Uh, sending bulk messages. This is something that's come up, especially in advisement. How do we send mass communication to our students when we have important messages? Some people use YAM. I continue to use YAM. Uh, but Starfish has its own way to send mass uh, messages to students or sending bulk messages. So we'll review that process, the two main ways you can do it in Starfish. Why use Starfish for your bulk messages? Some future updates that are on their way to Starfish. And if you have any questions, uh, some time at the end for them. So a quick recap for last year's workshop, we went over just the, the bare bones basics of Starfish. How do you use it? Who uses it? What are their basic roles? So here are the three main groups of people that use Starfish. You have your instructors, advisors, and professional staff, and students. As instructors, you have the ability to raise flags. So if you notice something going on that's an academic concern, behavioral concern with the student, you can raise a flag and allow the rest of their success network, all those individuals connected to a student, to get that information. Um, you also have the ability to submit the progress survey. So at the start of each semest semester in those 100 and 200 level courses, we measure the progress in those first few weeks of students to see how they're doing. And this is another connective piece where all of the people within the the success network have the ability to see this information and follow up on it. And then following up with students, obviously. So if you get a message in Starfish, you have the ability to contact them and seek them out, as well as clearing flags and resolve tracking items. So, so if you have flags with a student, let's say excessive absences, they come in, they discuss what's going on, why have they been missing class, you feel that this isn't going to be an issue going forward or it's been resolved, you can clear that flag with them and have that conversation. Uh, is there a way to get rid of a flag after a student has withdrawn from the course? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure actually what capabilities a, a person has with a student after the fact with a flag, um, but something I could look into to see. M my first initial thought is yes, you should be able to remove the flag because whoever raised it should still have the ability to lower the flag. Yeah, Corey chimed in. Yes, we can clear it with the note that they withdrew. So yes, you should be able to go back and clear those flags. Um, so if you could send me the, the ID in the private chat, we can take a look at it. Yeah, but good question. So, and there's things like I will be totally transparent. Starfish is not my favorite program to work with, but in student services, looking for ways to manage data, contact students, there are a lot of great things. So for every headache and gripe I have with Starfish, kind of push it off to the side and recognize that all the strengths that it has to offer our campus are, are really beneficial. So advisors, how do we use it? Well, obviously we, we are constantly receiving not notifications from professors with submitting flags and kudos to students with our own emails and things. Um, you have the ability to get those notification what's going on with students. And you get, have the ability to record what you do 
um, with your students. So when you reach out to them with a flag, you can add in a comment on it. Um, you can just add comments in general. We're going to look at those and how you can use them to send out messages in a little bit here. Uh, but then also speed notes. And this is something we introduced last year and a new way for advisors is adding additional speed notes. And these are just things at the end of a meeting that you tag your meeting with to give us better insight as to what you discussed. So we can go back and uh, look at the data from each semester and say, okay, what were the the types of meetings that we were having with students, uh, where there are a lot of questions with uh, regarding withdrawing from classes, where there are a lot of meetings about uh, academic success and learning new skills, where there are a lot of meetings about registration. Uh, in the fall, we have a huge number of registration types of meetings, and then they they change. There are different types of meetings in the spring, so it's a good way to to capture that uh, information. And then obviously clearing flags. And this is important too, to close the loop on things. We often think of a, a flag as something that uh, if it's there and it gets resolved, it means you did it. The student's better, they fixed whatever was going on. Not necessarily. Clearing flags can just be a way of letting us know you did your due diligence. So advisors, if you've emailed a student 20 times and they still haven't gotten back to you about the flag, well, I think it's now time to clear it. You did everything you could to get a hold of them. We know maybe the situation is going to change with this flag, but you tried. So it's a way for us to keep track of this information and to see you made the attempt. We can see the date that you cleared it. And then obviously students, they're the ones that we're working with in all of this. And so they're receiving the emails from Starfish when after something gets raised or said for about them in Starfish with their notes. Uh, they have the ability to contact offices and services. And going forward in Starfish, we'd like to add more services, more offices for students to be able to connect to, have one local central hub for students to access all the various resources that are important to them, one place. Obviously, they have the, the ability to schedule meetings with their advisors if they use Starfish, but faculty, you can set up uh, meeting times as well. And then for our students who are on academic probation, they have their success plans. They can always go back and view and say, hey, what are my requirements? What do I need to do this semester to get back into good standing? Some other things we looked at were progress surveys and zooming in. So you have the ability to take a look at individual students, go back and raise or lower flags after you've done the progress survey. We talked about raising flags manually and clearing them. Uh, some best practices we reviewed. So when you're in a meeting, you want to make sure you document your meeting. That's why we use those comments and speed notes. And we'll go over those again today and how you can use them for mass messaging. Uh, clearing flags, flags throughout the semester instead of at the end. This is kind of important because it can show us what reaching out we're doing to students. At the end of each semester, we're going to bulk clear all the flags, everything that's in the system on the students, it's archived, it's going to be there, but it's not an active flag. So if you're clearing that flag early on in the semester, we know that we're being active with these students in doing things. And it's okay to have flags cleared out at the end, but we would prefer when they get there, when you're working with students, clear them as you go. Uh, it just shows it's another way to document uh, what we are doing with students. Uh, we reviewed how you can connect your Google Calendar. This is really helpful. Just to, we have so many different things that are being utilized, all kind of going through our Google Calendar. So it's a good place to have that connected so you can see your events there. Uh, how to set up your professional profile. And then obviously, if you need help, you can reach out to us at the Advisement Center for Questions and Concerns. So all of that information was in the last workshop. We're not going to go over it in detail today, but if you do, if you do have questions about that sort of stuff, feel free to ask. Uh, all this information, you can find these types of questions. We have videos on the Advisement Center's website. Um, and John, I don't know if we still have access to last year's workshop videos, but um, I'd imagine if, if you do, do. They, you'd be able to, okay, so you'd be able to go back. They're all posted on the schedules, yes. <clears throat> yep, so you can even watch last year's uh, workshop to go back and see what some of these things that we covered in a little bit more detail. All right, so I'm just pause for a moment here. And I want to know, how do you currently use Starfish? So if some people would be willing to share what they're doing with Starfish right now, maybe what you would like to do with Starfish going forward, how to use it more effectively. So just turn this part into a little bit of a, a conversation. Wait to see. Please don't everyone jump in at once. You know, use the raise your hand. Use good Hi, Zoom Andrew. etiquette. Hey, Grace. 
Um, so one of the things I love about Starfish, it's super helpful, is checking up on students' grades um, to get a real picture of how they're doing in the class. Hopefully the professors are updating um, as they're going through the semester, but it helps us have an honest conversation. You know, a student can say, I'm doing great. And I'm like, you got a 36. Okay, so let's figure out why, <laughs> what's going on. And it's been very, um, it's just, for me, that's one thing I remember when it wasn't working last semester, I really missed it. And I'm glad that that feature is back. Same. <laughs> Definitely as an advisor, being able to have those conversations with the student when they say, everything's great, but your grades are telling me something different here. So we have a different interpretations of what great means, apparently. Uh, but no, that's another great way to use Starfish is to check on those grades. And faculty and instructors um, using Blackboard for your grade book, I know personally it can be a, a headache sometimes for things. I don't like to personally use it. I like my own grade book, but it's just another tool um, to to share information and communicate with our students. Uh, anyone else, how do you use Starfish or how would you like to use Starfish going forward? Um, I also see Starfish as a okay. tool that documents certain behaviors, you know, just to see if there's a repeat pattern among some students. Um, it helps to understand what's going on and what we can do to help them. Um, so if a student is failing in my course and in several other courses, and if I'm the advisor, I definitely can sit down and talk. There is something else going on beyond the academic issues, personal issues, and other issues. So it can be a way to intervene, especially if it is going on in several courses and with several instructors. So it helps us to see those issues. Yeah, see the bigger picture and the connections uh, with students, what's going on. I, I had an example of this last semester. It was in the spring, actually, spring of 2020, where a student had come in for drop-ins. Uh, and I went back and looked at their, their meeting records to see what was going on and the uh, tracking items, just to, as to you know, get a picture of what was really going on with the student. And I had noticed this pattern where they had lots of flags being raised in the fall semester and not so much in the spring semester. And they were on academic probation coming in for help in the spring, um, but not in the fall. And the pattern there was they were struggling in the fall semester for some reason, back into school after summer break, socializing, trying to get back in those good habits of being a student, uh, falling off the tracks a little bit, realizing, oh, I have to get back on and you do better. I'm assigned an AP advisor. Oh no, I gotta go through this whole process again and would turn around and have a good spring semester. So you could see that. And then we talked with the students and said, hey, you know, going into each fall semester now, it tends to be a rough time for you. So what can we do ahead of time to prepare for it? So if you can go in, you see a student, oh, I, I'm noticing this issue with a student. Let me see what's going on in their other classes. Have other professors raised flags on them? Have they been meeting with their advisor? Have they even had their first success plan meeting yet if they're on AP? So there are different things we can check on. You have access to this information to see what's going on elsewhere with the student. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, one more, let's try to get for three. Anyone have a, a way that they're currently using Starfish or how they would like to use it going forward? Andrew, I just want to put a note in there. I don't want to steal your last third <laughs> um, use, but what you were just discussing is, is very important, especially for the advisement center folks who are um, acting as the first year advisor. And as we move these students on to a faculty advisor, it's good for the faculty advisor to know if we've seen this student multiple times um, the notes on there, what they're asking about. Hopefully we're clearing up some of that basic stuff and kind of teaching them how to use the system. Um, but we do have repeat customers. We have students that we see several times on some little things. So a student that might need a little bit more handholding as they go through, um, as you receive them for a faculty advisor, it's helpful to know that they've utilized the services, um, what they've, been told because there's notes in Starfish. Um, so it's it's a really good tracking to keep those notes and, and understand where the student is coming from and what they might need a little bit more help on. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you for mentioning that. All right, let's jump back into the presentation. And if anyone has any thoughts, questions, feel free to chime in. Uh, let's see, get back to presentation. 
All right, so beyond the basics, jumping into some more nuanced things here. So links to the calendar. So we now have the ability to share our direct link with students. Uh, this is uh, a, a godsend to Starfish. One of my big gripes with it originally was I had to send students through this maze of things. So you got to log on to your computer. You have to open up a web browser. Well, which web browser are you using? Are you using Chrome? Are you using Safari? Or if you're using Chrome, I know there's this error that you're going to run into and you're going to refuse to read the link that I'm going to send you that's going to resolve this issue. So all these steps students had to go through just to book an appointment. Um, I could have sent them my Google Calendar. Why am I now sending them all this you know, process to just book an appointment with me? Well, now that's been taken care of. Starfish has a direct link to your calendar that you can embed in an email to make it easier to be accessible to students. You can add it to your link um, on your faculty profile on the website if you want to do that. Put it wherever you want to get students access to your calendar. They can then go in and book appointment, You know, see when you're busy, when your office hours are, things like that. And the way you get there is by going to your institutional profile. So to think how you get there in Starfish, you log in, you click on the hamburger icon in the left-hand corner, click on your name, institutional profile, and you'll have the ability to get to share links here. I have to make sure that the um, one, oops, going on to the next screen. Uh, the check boxes though here, this one is make the link available in the services tab on your profile for the other staff to copy. So if you're connected to a service, if you're an advisor, I don't think that's many of us here, um, but eventually if you were a part of a service, this is something that way you'd be able to, a student would be able to go check out, oh, I see the service is available to me. Oh, here's how I book an appointment with this individual person. So direct links to calendar, a lot of advisors, we have them embedded in our email signatures. Uh, others might have them posted on various places. I like to send it as a hyperlink in text to students in emails as a reminder. Um, I get this all the time, the quick email. Hey, Andrew, here's this question. Can we talk about it in a scheduled appointment? So what I'll do is fire off a quick email to them. Use this link to schedule their, your appointment. Embedded right there. Uh, but this is very helpful. So another way to send students to the places that they need to be. All right, sending bulk messages. And this is kind of the, the main course of today's workshop. Uh, especially in advisor realm, lots of students on our caseload. We want to send out one vital piece of information to as many students as possible. Uh, but how do we do it? Could I send emails? Yes. But one of the problems with emails, who knows who sent our emails or who received them? Uh, how can we track that among our colleagues? Who would know that I've sent uh, all of my students X number of emails or correspondence based on so many different topics? Uh, there's no way to track that alone in Gmail. So we can use Starfish um, as a way to send out these messages to students. And then also, as we've talked about previously, record that information, which is going to be helpful for future either advisors with students, meetings, things like that. All right, so a couple of ways of sending bulk messages in Starfish. So the first thing is whenever you're doing it, uh, if you've selected less than 50 students, the system's just going to process that thing automatically. You don't have to worry about any time delays or anything like that. Uh, so once you go through this process, it's going to send it out instantaneously if it's less than 50 students. If you're talking more Sorry, than 50... Andrew, can I ask oh, a question? For, yeah, go ahead. Uh, from the previous slide. So when you're saying sending bulk messages to students, to several students, um, are you talking from the advisor end or from an a instructor end? It could be an instructor end too. So obviously instructors have the ability to message their classes um, through Blackboard. But let's say you're teaching multiple classes and you're, you're saying, oh, I want to send all of my students um, this presentation that's happening next Thursday night. Well, you can go into Starfish and send a bulk message to all of your classes without having to go into each individual course. You can just pull up all of your students and send out a message. Or for advisors, you know, you want to send out your whole caseload. Um, or you want to send something, um, let's say to cert, you can go through and add additional filters. So you want to send it to your AP students uh, who also are your first year students. So maybe not your second, third year academic probation students, but only your first year students want to send them out a quick message. Uh, so it's just a, another way to send these out. Now this screen grab here though, I just will indicate this is not from our institution. This is just provided by Starfish. So they have a couple different things like the retention score. Uh, we don't have that information. 
in our starfish yet or prospective student, but good question. Thank you. All right, so back to sending bulk messages. So if you do have more than 50 students, which is many of us, just know it's going to take some time for that to process. I was very confused the first time this happened to me. I saw this window pop up. I clicked out of it too quickly, didn't know what was happening. I was trying to find the queue, wasn't sure when my message was going to get sent out. And then several minutes later, I got another little notification saying that my message was sent out. So just be aware that this little window will pop up when your messages are in the queue. Um, but when this pops up, there are several things you can do. So you can click on the back to the student list to go back to your uh, batch request begins and your return to the My Student page. You can review your queued items on the home page upon selection of your batch request uh, begins and you are directed to the home page where you can track the status of the actions in the batch sent items widget. And then you can cancel the batch send upon selection your batch send job uh, or cancel the batch send upon selection. Your batch send job is canceled. No action has occurred. So you can cancel that right with these little buttons. So a couple of things there when you're trying to send out. All right, so how do you specifically do this though? So that's just kind of the overview of the process. The first way we're gonna look at is with the message uh, function. So this is actually the one that is not recommended, uh, but it's a way to send an email to all of your students in Starfish. So it will come from Starfish to them uh, in the form of an email. The message is private, and this is why we don't recommend it, meaning that's only going to be visible to you and the student. So maybe it is a private email, and that's okay. You're trying to send that out. So that's its own separate category. But if we're trying to send out a message that's important, something that we'd want to go back and show other colleagues, hey, this is what we worked on. This is why I communicate with the, the students. There's different ways to do that in Starfish so we record that information. So that's why I say consider alternatives. Uh, but it can be used to send quick bulk messages. And I don't know if I have the example. Let me just go forward now. Um, I don't know if I include it, but I'll talk about it now. So I sent out uh, a mass uh, email using Starfish in the message function on the 22nd of December during the whole pass fail business when I had just students constantly bombarding me at like all hours of the day with, hey, where do I see my final grades? And I'd already sent out an email with the instructions to go view them and how they get there in my suite going banner, uh, but that wasn't working. So instead of going in my email, I was already in Starfish. I was like, hey, this is a great way to send out a mass email quickly. So a couple clicks and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's what the box that will pop up looks like. So you put in the subject for your email. I think mine was to the effect of how to look up your grades the body of the email, just write, hey students, uh, I know you're still running into issues with checking out your grades. Here's the way to go look at the pass fail option for the fall 2020 semester to be able to see your final grades. Everyone should have access to that with no issues. You can send a copy to yourself so that way you know you get the email, click submit and it will get sent out. All right, the other way to send out a mass message is with the notes. So you can actually Think of it sounding like mass notes or adding mass notes to a student profile. Uh, but the beauty with this is that you have the ability to send them an email too. So if you're trying to send out communication, but you want to have a record of that communication, this is probably the best way to do it. And notes are viewable by anyone in the, su the success network who has the viewing permissions for that specific note. So some notes, um, depending now, I think most of the notes are the, um, yeah, the note types that we use are going to be available, viewable to pretty much everyone in the success network. So there wouldn't be an issue that's there. But if there was ever something we need to create in the future that was more targeted for specific populations, that is something we could do. But know that when you make a note, you send it out to students, um, this is something that we as professional staff can go back and take a look at, which is helpful. So here's what that looks like. So you've got your, all, your students selected. You select the note type. What kind of note is this, the academic concern, um, the date that you're sending it, the subject, the body, think of this as like the email, and then you can send a copy to yourself, but send a copy of the note to the student. So think of this as how you actually send the message out to them. This is how they receive that email. It will tell you the number of recipients you've selected. So this is important too. double check. Oh, did I intend to send that to 7,000 students or, oh, whoops, I accidentally am a you know, administrator or whatever, I didn't mean to send out to all my students. I want to go back and look at specifically my academic probation caseload. So verify the number. 
um, but then see if it's a shared note or a private note. So obviously, as I just mentioned, note permissions are based on the note type, uh, but you could go back and make a private note. Again, we're not recommending it for this specific use. This is to send out a mass email essentially to your students, keep that recorded in Starfish. So you'd want this note to be shared. Uh, go ahead and hit submit and your note should go through. All right, so why use Starfish for bulk messaging? We've kind of covered up or covered these topics already, but let's review them again. So it keeps the correspondence with students in one place. We can go back and take a look at the messages that have been sent, the flags that have been raised, the kudos, notes, all in one place. So as an advisor or an instructor, you're not jumping around to several different systems to get information on your students. And we have to do that anyways. So to reduce the amount of clicking, try to keep as much bulk messaging within Starfish. If you know that's the hub you're going to go back to, try to keep it there. Uh, obviously, it allows other members of the Student Success Network to see what information is being shared. And that, that might be the best strength of this, is that you can go back and you can see what others have said. Hey, what did that first-year advisor you know, talk to my advisee about? What sorts of topics? Did they talk about careers at all? You know, um, Were they interested in a second major or minor, but you know, didn't really want to commit to it within their first year. You don't want to have to rehash that whole conversation again. You can go back into your next meeting with a wealth of knowledge based on all the previous conversations your student has had with other professional staff. And the last bit too, and this is why I use YAM uh, for sending mass messages, but you can also use Starfish as we've gone over, uh, but to track red receipts. And I couldn't think of a, oh, I might have it on the next slide actually. Oh, so this is the, yeah. Um, so you have the ability to track red receipts. So this is that message that I had sent out to students on the 22nd. So here's a little email that sent out. But this is the beauty of using Starfish this way too, if you don't use YAM, is you can track to see when the student actually read the message you sent. So I sent this out at 345. I can see that this student opened up and read my email at 421 PM. So you can go back and see, hey, does the student actually read the thing I sent them? Did they click on it? Did they open it? Now, there's some strengths that reasons why I prefer to use YAM for this. A lot of times I embed e links and I can see if students clicked on the link in my email. But if you just want to say, hey, are students actually reading the things I'm sending them? Here's a good way to do that. That's already in a system that we use that you don't have to learn anything else. So that's just the, the different ways or benefits of bulk messaging and why keeping them starfish would be helpful. All right, some future updates with Starfish. Uh, there's a big update coming to Starfish at some point in time in the spring semester. Not exactly sure when that's going to come through, but there are going to be hopefully benefits from that that we can take advantage of, one of which is going to be text messaging. Still trying to figure out what this is going to look like for our campus. But as we all know, students these days are more drawn to their cell phones than they are their computers. There's some research out there that suggests students are more likely to read things that come via text message rather than email or other types of notifications. They love their social media. If you get a little notification that pops up about some app they're using, that isn't their email, that they have to read this long thing, less clicking, less tapping involved. Uh, text messaging is the way to go for students. So eventually we'll be able to send out messages uh, to students right to their phones as a text message. Um, Andrew, can I jump in real quick there? Yeah, go ahead, Corey. Um, so this is something that uh, students that are coming to Oswego, incoming students, uh, Slate is a program that admissions folks are using, and they have the ability to text message students. So this is something that they're, they're getting used to uh, receiving a text message from the school. Uh, we're also using a chat bot, which is a text messaging service um, for students to help them navigate, specifically when COVID came about, um, if they needed help. So it goes to the COVID hotline. Um, so there are a couple of different systems on campus that are starting to use text messaging as an option. And all recent research goes to this is the way that students are um, starting to communicate. And I think we saw that. I see Rich on here. Um, he was one of our advisors from the, the pre-registration days that started to use Google texting, um, Google voice texting way back when. And it, we really found it to be helpful to connect to students that weren't checking their email, didn't know how to check their email as an incoming student. So um, I'm very excited to, to see this come up. But like Andrew said, it's, it's still in development. So we will definitely have more information as it comes about.
So thank you for putting this in here, Andrew. Yeah, I'm excited for this because I think it's something that just makes it, we're still doing the professional thing where it's on our end, it's in the systems we use, but students are used to these less professional means of communication. Um, and a lot of this, it, we're just trying to get important information to them. We're not passing judgment on the way that they communicate. It's just acknowledging the reality of the situation. And when we've got to tell our, our, our students, hey, you got to drop this. Hey, you need to do this thing. If it's urgent, they're going to open up their phone. They're going to look at it. They're going to respond. So texting is great. Uh, there are more new features coming out in Starfish. One of them is the student view. So sometimes right now, I think it's it's difficult to understand, like, what is the student perspective with this? We have to you know take screenshots and send. Um, Starfish should have the ability coming out to click on student view to see what the student's perspective is. So if you're curious ever to see like, hey, what does it look like for the student on my end? Um, what do they have access to? That should be coming in Starfish. Uh, and then as these new things roll out, I think as an advisement center, we'll have additional trainings for these new features so we can learn them uh, and ways to implement them on campus. But there are so many different things that we can do with Starfish that we just we haven't been using yet um, because either these features haven't been enabled, they've been being developed, we're doing different things on campus. So as Starfish keeps coming out with these um, new features, I think going into the future with us in the advisement center, it's going to be important that we start utilizing those features as well. So we'll provide trainings for all those things so I can learn how to do them and share it out with the campus. All right, so that's it for this workshop for some of the beyond the basic things with Starfish. Does anyone have any questions about that? those processes we went over? Um, or for individual questions, one-on-one -on -one support with your Starfish, send me an email. We don't need to do that with everyone today. but gladly help with any concerns with Starfish. So any questions at this point? Hopefully learn something clear as mud. Wait and see. Andrew, I do have one quick question. Um, one thing that I was wondering is, is there a way, and you may have said this, but I didn't catch it, to, if I'm a department chair, can I get a list of all the students that are in our major and send a bulk email through Starfish? Uh, Corey, is there a... Yeah, so Starfish, I'll give you a little background on kind of the, the back end of things. Starfish works on connections. So we have we set up connections or roles in Starfish. So one of them is an academic advisor. We have probation advisors. We have advisement coordinators. So we have linked all the advisement coordinators to Starfish and their students. So if you go into a student success network, you can see in their network, they have their hall directors, they have their advisement coordinator, um, and so that's really the only connection that we have as far as seeing everyone in your department. So your advisement coordinator should be connected to them and be able to run those lists of who's in there. Um, it doesn't, I I've, I've run it. Advisement coordinator as well, I guess I can get the list anyways. Yeah, yeah, we, we have not done the chairs. Um, if that is something, I mean, we can definitely look at creating that role if, that is, if, if that's needed, but we did it for advisement coordinators just so that they could see who was in their program. Um, and we also looked at the reports too about um, some information. So if you're specifically looking for um, assignments, advisor assignments, so who was assigned to who, um, we might have to look at the registrar's list for that because I do not believe, it'll give you a list of your students, but it won't give you a list, it won't say your student and then who their advisor is. It doesn't give you all of that detailed information. So we still have to rely on the um, uh, registrar's list for that. But uh, if you send me a note, I can, I can help you with that later and I can show you a couple of tricks for it. Thanks. Any other questions? I actually have a question. So we do have notes in MySvigo. You know, when you go to degree works, mm -hmm. so you have notes in profile, you also have notes in degree works. Um, and now we have notes in here in Starfish. Can these all be connected so that I can, like, you know, sometimes they're all scattered 
and I have to go to three different places to see what notes were there about the student. So can something like that be done? Uh, unfortunately, not within Starfish. We don't have the ability to um, put that information there. It's just different silos. And I think that's the unfortunate reality that we're always going to face in higher education is mm -hmm. that there will be some system that keeps track of some data for some certain amount of time that isn't accessible or there are some limitations or doesn't make sense to be uh, integrated with whatever other piece of software or data system or whatever it is that's being used. Um, I, I just want to, yeah, I just want to piggyback on that. Um, the notes in Starfish are really specific to the program. So specific to the major, like if you need to make a deviation for something, or if you talk to the student about they should take certain classes at this time. If you think of Starfish, it really is beyond coursework. I mean, as a first year advisor, um, we're working at just the, the intro level classes and then passing them off. It's more important for the students to talk with the department faculty advisors about the really nitty gritty with their um, programs and their majors. But from our end, if we have a junior stopping in to ask about student success, you know, I need help with time management. I need help with, you know, organizing my calendar or stuff. That's more relatable to Starfish. So I wouldn't want to put that note in my Oswego. Um, to make Maya Swigo super long. It, Maya Swigo is really just for the major and for the program. Starfish is kind of for everything else. Like what else is the student requesting help on? Um, and specifically with AP, so with academic probation, what success strategies did we put in place for the student and where did that go? So there, I do want to call it two silos, but not really because there is some appropriate information that should go in Maya Swigo and not in Starfish, but Starfish is just kind of the holistic view of everything that the student is dealing with um, and not really appropriate for the, the Maya Suigo note section. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it's just that I was thinking like, just lets the student comes in with problems and I need to see everything together. Mm -hmm. so that's the only thing, but I do understand um, it seems like then Starfish would be more appropriate for advisors and Maya Swigo would be more appropriate for, uh, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I need to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this has been the million dollar question. I mean, you know, I, I came into advisement um, way back when and, and there was discussions, you know, several years ago about where do we put notes? Where's the most appropriate? And there's so many different places that we could put notes and can we just make a system all for one and it really does come back to you know as an advisor there it's it's puzzle piecing it's you know investigating you have your Maya Swigo you have your degree audit and now you have Starfish for kind of the supplemental stuff so um, I don't know if as a college will ever you know land on one exact note-taking system for, for all students, because I don't know if it's appropriate for some of the notes to go all in one place, but I do feel your pain. Every day that we deal with students, I pull up every single system. I pull up their student profile, I pull up their degree audit, and then I also pull up their starfish to just kind of get a big picture of everything that's going on there. So. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> I feel your pain, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? These are good. I, uh, I just, I want to loop back to Zoe's question at the beginning, as far as a student withdrawing, I, I uh, tried to direct message, but I also sent you an email too. Um, but I think it is good for the group to know kind of the back end part of Starfish um, is the, like I said, is connection. So as, as soon as a student withdraws from the class, it removes that connection. You are no longer their instructor. So if you've put a flag in there, technically it's up to the advisor. The advisor can still see that. They still get notification that there's a flag in there and they should be going in and saying, hey, you've already withdrawn from this class. I'm gonna go ahead and clear it, no big deal. Uh, flags do sit in there unattended and it's, it's still no big deal. So this, we still know that the student withdrew from the, the, the course. It's noted in several different places that they withdrew. 
at the end of the semester, we bulk clear all flags. So if a flag is sat there, an advisor hasn't touched it, obviously you can't because you're no longer connected to them as the instructor. Not a big deal. We just bulk clear it and then it, it stays on the student record saying, hey, they were in trouble. But if you look at the timeline, then they withdrew from the class, you know, no harm, no foul. So um, unfortunately, we can't keep that connection as far as instructor and student, as soon as they withdraw, that connection is removed, so, yeah. All right, I think that's it then, uh, unless there are any other questions. Um, obviously, thank you everyone for attending. Um, if you do have individual questions about how do you starfish, just wanna get better at navigating it, setting up your calendar, stuff like that, do not hesitate to reach out to us, specifically me. I'm more than willing to set up a, a Zoom meeting to get that going for you. Talk about ways that you can use Starfish. Uh, it's, it's a great tool when we use it, not so great if we don't. So the more advisors, the more instructors we get using it to its max, the, the better we can take advantage of these services provided to students. And then there's data too. And that's my favorite part about this, that there's a whole bunch of data on the back and we can go in and analyze and see, hey, is the stuff we're doing, is it correlated to student success, student failure? And then what can we do with it? Pick up, guys. Thanks, Christina. <laughs>